Welcome to the second season of Mompreneurs, where we celebrate and learn from fabulous black women who are out here killing it as moms in chief, running both their households and their businesses. I'm your host, Nancy Red, and I come from a lovely lineage of black mompreneurs in Southern Virginia. I'm thrilled to present this intimate interview series that highlights inspiring and educational stories about how women are creating incredible opportunities and generational wealth for their families. But money isn't all the series is about. Balancing motherhood, mental health, and happiness is really important too. Latavia Roberson has been dazzling us with her talent and business acumen for over three decades, from Girls Town to Destiny's Child, and now lighting up runways with her lingerie line, building the careers of other brilliant artists and athletes, all while acting and producing a documentary about her incredible life story. Oh, girl, we have a lot to talk about. Latavia, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't know how we're going to pack all this in. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but, hey. We're going to try. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so first, what I think is really interesting is there's so many businesses to discuss, but one of the things I find really interesting is that you are the first black female to actually represent a professional boxer. How on earth did you go from singing to sports management? I don't even know. <laughs> but my business partner, Alfred Adams, he it took him like 45 minutes to ask me if I was willing. But I used to watch boxing with my dad since I was like three years old. And he was like, would you be interested in, after the 45 minutes, <laughs> uh, he was like, would you be interested in managing a boxer? I said, hell yeah, bring it on. Like, you know, because I I wanted to be in a position to where I can create a different lane. Everything doesn't need to be about me. Ooh, you got to sing. You got to do this. If you don't do that, if you don't do this, then you can't do nothing. Uh, you want to diversify. Yes, absolutely. But here's the thing. You can't just say, I volunteer to be a, a boxing manager. It's a whole process. Yes, it is. And the things about it is that I have a team that helps me with it. I'm not the person, I have a numbers person. I have a, you know, different people that do different things and all that. And, but what I do, I'm the mom of everything. And so I take into consideration like being the mom for my boxers. You know what I'm saying? And all of that. It's not like, oh, baby. No, no. Okay, you feel this kind of way. You need to do this. But now nah, your, your feet was missing this way. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I do take things into consideration and, and things like that. And so that's why I, I love it. And I'm looking forward to getting my next couple boxers as well. And all kinds of things. Now, here's what I think is really interesting about you. A lot of people don't realize is we all have hidden talents. We all have obvious talents, right? <laughs> like you've got very obvious talents that have gotten you here. But I think one of your hidden talents that a lot of people don't really realize is you have an, an incredible ability to spot talent. That's a talent, to yes. spot talent. Yes. And you've been spotting talent since you were like eight years old, which is bananas to me. Six. Six years <laughs> old. <laughs> You're well, a, that's when I started. That's when you started in the streets. And here's the thing. I got to be honest. I really wish I could be a fly on the wall in like 1980s Houston because it seems like it was just popping with hustle and talent. And you were right there in the forefront. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall, too. <laughs> but you know, you were the fly, you were you were the wall, you were the whole experience because you were a child actress. You were yes. in commercials, the yes. Just for Me commercial. Oh my goodness! Can you still you know that? I condition a relaxer queen. Just for me. I mean, it's crazy to think that now because none of us have relaxers. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> but at the time, and here you are. I mean, my daughter's eight. You have a nine-year-old. Yes. Can you even imagine them being the little professionals that you were then? The only reason why I'm going to say yes is because I only aspire for my daughter to be that. Now, the boy. Your three-year-old, London. <laughs> just let, let him grow up a little bit. As someone who has a son and a daughter, it just takes a little bit. Ooh. But you, you know that you had to have been a very mature kid to not only yes. be acting, to be singing, to be rapping, to be dancing, but also to know how to find other people. Many people might not know, but Kelly Rowland owes 
owes things to you, right? When you were well, eight years old? Well, I know that when I was in the third grade at Broad Grove Elementary School in Houston, Texas, um, Kelly and I were friends. And we used to play Barbies in the, in the closet. And she was singing Whatever You Want For Me from Whitney Houston. And I heard her um, sing. And I was like, um, I think that you need to come and <laughs> audition from the group that I'm in. So then my mom spoke with her mom and Kelly was definitely that. Kelly has an amazing voice. Oh it, her voice was amazing. <laughs> I, I could not even get out of that. And I was in the third grade. And you knew, and you had the foresight. A lot of people don't really think, hmm, this person has an amazing voice. Let me bring them into my situation. No, Kelly, her voice is amazing. It's angelic. Like, <laughs> it really is. But see, your voice is incredible too, but not just your singing voice, but also what you have to say and what you're trying to do with all of the different businesses. And also, right now, you are in the process of filming your own documentary, right? Yes, I am. The one thing that I love so much is that um, I've had a lot of people um, contact me and they wanted to give me money to do it and all that. But then I always I even go back to Master P, like actually. Um, I'm just that person that is like, you know what? I want to create my own narrative. People can offer me so much money, but everybody's like, what has she been doing all over these 20 years and all this stuff and all of that stuff? No, I'd rather you know it because if I were to do that and you were to be able to create my own, narr my own narrative, it would be um, awful for me. I need for you to know what it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I want to tell you what it is. Oh, you want to talk bad about that? You might talk bad about me about this. Oh, no, you missed this part of the bad as well. I have nothing to hide about my life and all this, and I've been wanting to speak my own truth about my own story for years and years and years. And I'm glad. And for me to put on a different hat and decide to be the person that goes behind the camera as well as being in front of the camera as well, it's bittersweet for me. What do you mean? Why is it bittersweet? Because people have said things about me and it's not true. So for people who are just watching who don't know, what are you referring to? What are some things people have said about you that aren't true? She's the bitter one of the group. She's this person. She doesn't um, comply and, and, and do things that she says that she's going to do and all this stuff. It wasn't my time to do that. And so I'm the person right now where I'm sitting in my own seat and in my own lane. I'm the person that's like, I don't care what people think about me anymore. Like, things hurt, but... I'm my own person. I'm creating my own lane, and it's my time to shine. It's my time to shine. <laughs> you're not just creating your own lane. You're creating multiple lanes, which I think is really interesting, and it, it is your time to shine. And what's interesting is a lot of people who sit at this table, um, you have some downs. You have a lot of downs. Yes. And the climb back up is difficult. Yes. How is being a mom encouraged your climb back up? Mm, not gonna do it. <laughs> not gonna do it. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> um, my climb back up um, with me being a mom, I'll do anything for my children. My children have made me understand how important it is for mommy to climb. I've always wanted to be a mom since I was 15. And my children have made me realize how important it is for mommy to always understand 
how important it is for me to be me. And it's not about what anybody thinks. My life is about my children. I'm an introvert. I love to really? be. Yes. <laughs> no, believe it or not. No, believe it or not. I'm an introvert. I love being in the house. Um, I like my own company. I had to learn how to love me. And me loving me has made me understand how much I need to love my children and love myself because my life, once I had them, was not about me anymore. My life became about something totally different. Like, and that's why I've created Mommy's Madness and things like that. Yeah, it's madness, but there's nothing like loving your kids. Like, it's not. And also wanting to provide for them, yes. not just while you're here, but but for their future. And, yes, and absolutely. I, I, I see a correlation with Lyric is nine, London is three. Yes. And, <laughs> you, and here you are with multiple irons in the fire. <laughs> yeah. But it takes a village. And that's why I have um, wonderful people around me. And they are helping me do the things. Um, once COVID hit and all that, you know, I got sit back, you know, a little bit and all that. Um, but at the same time, it let me get into my own head and be able to create things and understand things that it is that I want to do. And it's so crazy how God brings you back full circle and all that. And I'm so humbled to be able to be somebody that is now a mom and somebody that is somebody that is behind the camera and in front of the camera and all that. I'm lost for words right now um, because I never thought that I would be at this point in my life right now, but I'm here. They say, watch what you ask for. And I ask for it and God has given it to me and I'm elated. Like I really, really, really am. I am. Why did you not think you'd be here where you are today? What was this, what would have been the holding you back? I think that one thing that I've told myself is that um, it's not that I never thought that I would be here, but even with the girls and everything, I felt like they had to they needed to prove things to the world, but I needed to prove things to myself. What are some of those things you needed to prove to yourself? That I am enough. That I am enough. I need my own approval. I don't need anybody else's. And I was a person like for so long that was like, oh my gosh, they think this about me. They, oh my gosh, they think this. They think this, that. I'm not, things that people say about me, of course it hurts. But I love myself enough right now. And you love your family. I was about to say, and I love my kids. I so love my are. mom. And here I am. And here I stand. And I love me for me. So many mompreneurs come to being an entrepreneur when they become mothers because they can't make a nine to five work for them. But have you, been, have you ever had a nine to five? Because you've been working since you were six. But have you ever had a quote unquote day job with a boss? Yes, I have. What was the last day job you had? I was actually working at a record shop. Um, one of my great friends in Houston were all of the famous rappers that used to go get their hair cut next door um and it was actually it was something that i needed to do um for myself so i can help pay some bills when was this like how old were you i don't even know um it had to be in my 
early mid 20s so this was after destiny's child yes, and everything absolutely so, so after all of that you worked in a record store yes and, and it was to help pay your family bills yes and um i was cleaning bathrooms and people would come in like oh my gosh that is her that people would come in and then they would walk out but thank god that i had a friend um that actually had a shop that I was able to actually do that. And it was just to put food in my grandmother's, you know what I'm saying, house where my mom and myself lived um, at that time. Like I said, I'm humbled by a lot of things that I've had to go through, but it was traumatizing, especially because people would come and just, oh, oh, there she goes. She but how strong, hmm? how strong of you because many people wouldn't do it. Well, I mean, we got to do what we got to do. You don't have to do what you got to do, but you did what you had to do. Yes, and I, I did have to do what I had to do. And so how do we get from record store to here? Um, a very woman, um, a woman that I love very much, um, Miss Linda Casey. Um, twins from Jagged Edge's mother, she flew down to Houston and she drove me back to Atlanta and was like, we got to get you out of this. And we drove back. I was in hives the whole time. And I came back and I just started to meet other people and all that. Still love that woman so much. Just talked to her last week. <laughs> Did she say she was proud of you? Oh, yes. Yes. She's like, you should have been my daughter. Like, oh, well, like, you basically are. And we all need people like that in our yes, lives, right? Yes, and yes, so many yes. times, especially young success, it feels like, oh, my goodness, I, I, I can't climb back up. Mm -hmm. And inch by inch with support, like people like Linda, and now you've got an amazing boyfriend. You know, you just kind <laughs> of like... Miss, we can, we, we can talk about Mr. Jones, right? <laughs> the one you want. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> like, talk about the importance of when you're trying to get your businesses off the ground, when you're trying to get your life together, the importance of a support team that hopefully finds you. But if you don't find, if they don't find you, you have to find them. Absolutely. And that's why I like, I love that um, my mother and um, Miss Casey. Mrs. Casey, that they're still great friends and all that. Um, I love my support team. Um, I love my production team. I love my star, James. I love, you know, I, I, like I love everybody. I love Ryan. I love, I love Drew. I love everybody that has come around me. And the people that believe in me, even when I didn't believe in myself, um, it's always wonderful to know that even down from hair to makeup, Dallas, Christopher, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I'm saying, Tish, like everybody that is down for me, especially when I didn't believe in myself, they, they didn't came when they didn't been 100, like, for real. And they help you figure out things. And it's not always the first business that you start that works yes. out, right? Like yes. You, you've been through them. You've yes. been through hair. And now we've got all these different things. And what's really exciting is New York Fashion Week. Oh, my gosh. You're going I to can't. be there with a lingerie line. Whose idea was a lingerie line? Mine. And when did you start this journey? I, I've wanted a lingerie line since I was 15 years old. You've you wanted now, a lot of things since you were 15 years I know, old. But, you but want to no, have some kids? There, there, no, there were, seven, there were seven things. And it's so crazy that I'm 41 right now. And everything that I've wanted since I was 15 has started to come into fruition. And I always say, I look at Oprah Winfrey, I was like, she didn't start doing her things until she was in her 40s. And I'm like, so it's not that I'm late or that anything like that, you know? Like, I'm like, it's just my time. It's my time. And I have to listen to God. Like, I, like, I have to listen to God. And I've always wanted 
um, to do a lingerie line. I've always loved that. I've always been an intimate person, even being as young as I was. Um, I've always wanted to do a lingerie and bedding line. I always wanted to do well, it. So now we're doing it. Yes, we How are. How long has it taken? So we're, so you're debuting at New York Fashion Week. I'm, I'm actually debuting my intimate line that I'm doing. But um, Seductress will, <laughs> will be um, something that will be happening definitely by September, you know, fall next year. So it's, sure. it takes, so it's in production. Yes. You're debuting the intimate the line. The intimate, yes. And then production and hopefully sales yes. and places yes. uh, will, will, will want to pick it up and then yes. you go around. Yes, so it's a process. Yes, it is. So you've got a lot of fun things in I'm, process. Yes, I'm, you know, and I'm so humbled that I was even asked to show. How did you get asked to show at New York Fashion Week? Because my brand manager, uh, Ryan Barker, um, he showed um, this past February. And with me doing that, I was just, I was asked and I was floored. Like, he's sitting in my bed next to me, actually, and was like, Okay, well, maybe I can talk to her. Maybe she'll be okay with this. Okay, okay, but let me, you know, Marie, he calls me by my middle name. Okay, Marie might do this. I said, how the hell are you sitting next to me and then you not asking me about what, what? <laughs> well, would you be? I said, what the hell you mean? Hell yeah, I want to show at Fashion Week. <laughs> and so here we are. I'll have 24 models and all that. That's it's, insane. It's amazing. I'll be in the grand ballroom and it's That's not that's not cheap either. <laughs> How is this coming about? Where is this because, coming from? Because the Lord loves me and I love the Lord. <laughs> do you know it? <laughs> so, so do you have investors? Are you self funding? It's a mixture of the both. Like I said, it's my time and I have to believe that. You gotta take risks. Yes. You know, I talk to people all the time. It takes years. Tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the red. Yeah. But when you believe in yourself, sometimes it works out. Yeah. And over the years, you've started many different businesses. What would you say is your biggest standalone business success? I love being a mother. I've wanted to be a mom for, I don't know, my children bring me joy. So I've created Mommy's Madness. <laughs> What is Monami's Madness? <laughs> I can think of a lot of things it could be. <laughs> oh, a whirlwind. Um, but it's um, Mommy's Madness is um, a podcast with a live audience. Um, and it's about the things that we, we don't know what's going to happen on our day to day and all that. And I really want to, because I'm a single mother. I want to reach out to the single mothers and not people that are just in my industry or anything like that. I don't care if you are somebody that's in college and then you work a job or anything like that. I want it to be really, really real. I wanted to reach out to the women that are really struggling um, and all that. Um, so you don't want it to be a rose-colored picture of no. Pinterest and popsicle no. molds. <laughs> no. And then there's a slash to Mommy's Madness, and then there's Mommy's After Darkness that I've, Mommy's After Dark that I've um, created as well. And that's when, okay, we're going to put them kids to bed. Um, now it's time for Mama to go have a glass of wine and all that stuff. We're going to put on some, some cute little pajamas and all that stuff, and we're going to talk about them kids have got on my damn nerves all day and this, 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 that. And then the things that we really struggle with, you know, like all the time. And like, we need to be able to release and like let our hair down and, you know, things like that. So I think that it's, it's I think it's the best of both worlds, um, especially for me. Um, so you, you, you're going to have to be, have your... 18 and older card for the mommies after dark because <laughs> uh, I promise you 
we got some some serious topics we're gonna be talking about. Okay, so you got Mommy's After Dark. You have a lingerie line that's going to be a New York Fashion Week. You're working on a documentary. You're still acting. Goodness knows what else is going on. Your sports management with uh, with with boxers. Um, <laughs> Within all of this, somebody has to be, you've got a lot of people advising you. You've got a lot of people who are helping you. What is some of the best business advice that you've received that you think other moms who want to become entrepreneurs would benefit from? The only thing that I would say as um, mompreneurs, <laughs> um, um, the only thing that I can say is just make sure that you have a, a great team around you. I like for my team to be this small, my people to be this small. When it's this small and you lose one, it's like literally like losing a finger. Yeah. But you have to be comfortable fine. letting go of the finger. I cut it off, but I didn't put it in, in the highway. And then somebody run over it. That's difficult. It's very difficult. Especially when they're blood. So when we're looking at business and family, sometimes it's not always the best mix. No, it's not. It's oh. not. So... When you're giving advice and you're, you're suggesting people about getting a tight knit team, that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. um, what is some advice that you have been given in your business ventures that was not the best? Like, what do you look back and say, oh, that did not serve me? I can't actually say, looking back on business, what did not serve me. What I can say, though, is what did serve me is for me to put my thinking cap on, and even especially with me having children and all that, you got to always, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and all that, and just be cautious of all that. Do your paperwork, create a paper trail, you know what I'm saying, all that, like, you got to look out for you, because if you ain't going to look out for you, who is? There are people that are around you that love you, but if you don't look out for yourself, who will? So you've got a lot going on. There's a lot of wisdom here, and there's a lot of growth, and there's a lot of learning, right? And with all of these different businesses, I don't know how you do it all day long. Walk us through a day in Latavia's shoes as a mompreneur. What, what are you doing? How do you have your hand in all of these different businesses that you're that you're working on now? Because it's hard enough oftentimes for one person to start one business, right? You're at the beginning of a lot of different businesses. It'll be so fun to see in three years all of this stuff coming to fruition. How do you handle your day? What time do you wake up? How does the day go? What time do I wake up? Yes. Usually about, but between three and four. In the morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my alarm goes off at like 6.15. So you wake up ready to start the day, you're getting, your, you're getting your day on, three or four in the morning. <laughs> Carpool starts at 7.15. So wake my daughter up at 6.15. Go make your lunch. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Which is smart. <laughs> nah, you do it. <laughs> All that. I do that. And when I get back home from taking my daughter through the carpool and drop her off at school, and then I get on my conference calls. I do all that. It takes a village. And a lot of things that I do, people are in different, you know, states and things like that. So that's why I have to rely on people, but I'm on conference calls like all day, all day. If I got to go out of town, I have to go out of town and things like that. Um, I rely on people and they're like, no, we got to talk to the boss lady. Like, like. Love that title. You like being the boss lady. Yes, I love that title. How does it feel? Because like it, you're, it you're, 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 you're not a number. You're number one. It, yes, it feels amazing. She writes the checks. I love it. <laughs> but I rely on people, and people rely on me as well. And that's how I make the machine work. And I don't have a lot of people around me. I can't have too many people. I can't have too many fingers in the pie, but the people that I do have in the pie, they people that, that I trust. You're 41. You've got 41 years more le left. You could do anything. Absolutely. You've done a lot. You're on your way to doing so much more. So many people listening to this feel like they don't have a chance, that they might have hit some kind of bottom, or that they don't have a clue as to how to get started back up. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to them who sees you as a role model 
for someone who they want to use their talents and their skills, but it's scary or you know, they're a little traumatized or they don't even know where to begin? Only thing that I can say to somebody that feels like they've hit rock bottom, um, because I definitely have. People were wondering where I'd been for so long. Only thing that I can say is it's hard. It's always God, and I don't wanna, like I say, it sounds cliche and all that. It's always God, but I mean, it took me years to come from underneath the rock that I was under. Like, it really did. And you can, they say, take it day by day. No, no, don't take it day by day. Take it moment by moment. Because if you miss a moment, you can't get that moment back. It's just like when I have to be away from my children. I'm like, every moment that I'm away from my children, I can't get that moment back. So I strive on that. And the mompreneur in me, I go on that, but everybody is not a mother or is not a parent. So it's about looking within yourself and understanding that you do have a purpose, regardless of what anybody says about you. No matter what, everybody ain't gonna like you. Every five people that love you, probably about two of them at least gonna hate you. It's okay. You gotta get thick skin and all that. It's about knowing your worth and what you are and who you are. Can't nobody tell you who you are. Everybody ain't gotta like me. And I actually had to learn that. It took me years and years and years. It took me damn near 20 years to even learn that because my feelings used to get hurt so bad. But I'm good because I love me. I can be in a room with myself. Guess what? I don't need no friends in the room with me. I can be in a room by myself because I love myself. But you can't be in a room by yourself because you got two kids. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> this is incredible. We're really excited about all the businesses that you have, all of the lessons that you've learned over the years and where you are, and also the fact that your mom, that being a mom really did encourage you for this next generation. Because here's the thing, you, had, you couldn't give up. You had no. two kids who depend on you. Yes. They're definitely part of your come up. Yes, absolutely. So... So we appreciate you, and we're excited to see how all of this all shapes out because we've been following you since you're eight. <laughs> we'll follow you since you're, until you're 80. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed this so much. It's good to get to share yourself and thank to share you. your story and to, and to go after your dreams. Yes. Thank you so very much. <laughs> this has been another incredible episode of Mompreneurs. Watch on MadamNoir.com and listen and follow Mompreneurs wherever you get your podcasts and at UrbanOnePodcast.com. You can check out Latavia's documentary in progress on YouTube at The Reintroduction. Thank you. Thank Yay. you so much.